G'day, my name's Nurchin, and today we're talking about Mokele Yembembe, the hidden beast of the Congo. And to do that, we're gonna have to crack open a fresh can of worms. <laughs> Mokele Mbembe is a large amphibious creature from the Congo River Basin. It's perceived as both a living creature and a kind of spiritual entity, and its name roughly translates to one who stops the flow of rivers. It's described as being at least as large as an elephant with a long neck and a long tail. It's coloured a kind of brownish grey, and it has a, well depending on reports, a long horn, a long tooth, or nothing of the sort. Though keep in mind narwhals are considered to have a long horn, and that's just one extra long tooth, so could be a, a bit of both, a bit of this, a bit of that. Some say this horn is used for shanking elephants. What a beast. But they also say that it's a herbivore. Doesn't mean it can't whoop some ass though. And finally, it has large flat feet with three claws on, on each foot, not, not, not between all feet. I'm so good at this. Like a lot of classic cryptids, Michele and Bembe is amphibious, living among the swamps and flooded forests of the Congo. This association with water may be where it got its strange spirit status. I mean, strange as in, it appears to have been added well after the fact, with almost all reports treating it like a real creature. We've seen this before in cryptids, but in this case it almost seems more like an honorific, or it's just used to help cover up information that seems illogical. So, if you take away its spiritual aura, why, it looks just like a dinosaur. The common assumption being, Michele Mbembe is a long-living sauropod, possibly an apatosaur. This creature has been known about by the Congolese people for generations, but it only reached media fame in the West in 1909 with Carl Hagenbach's publishing Beasts and Men. Men and Beasts? Beasts and Men, that's the one. Off the back of a dinosaur craze, this became all the rage amongst zoologists, biologists, and of course, cryptozoologists, and it led to a whole bunch of expeditions. Problem is, it's very difficult to reach these remote swamps of the Congo River Basin, especially in the early 19th century, and it led to all of these expeditions ending in complete failure. Since then, it's made appearances in publishing, such as There Could Be Dinosaurs, written by the man himself, Ivan T. Sanderson, plus a bunch of other pop culture appearances. That's led it to being one of the most popular cryptids in the world. So, multiple expeditions, even as late as 2008, have continued to turn up nothing. So, why do these people persist? It's because Mokele Mbembe is at the head of a religious dispute. Thought we put that spiritual stuff aside? No, this is different. This is Christianity. Plot twist. For a while, Mokele Mbembe was looking like a very promising possibility of a surviving dinosaur. So why do the Christians care? Well, this is more specifically the New Age creationists. They believe in fundamental creationism, but they concede that dinosaurs existed. So the idea is, if they can find a dinosaur, still alive from millions of years ago, it will throw doubt over most of the fossil records and it'll disprove a lot of assumptions about evolution. Take that one, atheist. <laughs> the term used here is living fossil, ironically coined by Charles Darwin in The Origin of Species. The term describes a species that has remained mostly unchanged since prehistoric times. Species evolve to increase their chance of survival. When they find their niche or they stop facing any major threats, that evolution decelerates. What about crocodiles? What about coelacanths? Yeah, pose are children for the term, but they still have evolved over the years, just at a far less drastic rate. So, what does this mean for Michele and Bembe? Well, first off, Charles Darwin already explained most of this, so if the creationists do find it, it doesn't really change anything. As far as living fossils go, the fact it lives secluded in incredibly remote areas, it kind of checks out. But we can't ignore the second point that the creationists raise, the fossil records. How could this creature's bones remain unfound for so long? People love to use the coelacanth here as an example of a species thought extinct but then found again. The difference here is how fossils are made. See, this fish, its bones are very small, very fragile, and it doesn't fossilize easily. A sauropod's bones aren't that. Though a small point in favor of Michele and Bembe, for a long time, Africa was seriously lagging behind the rest of the world in paleontology, which may have helped keep its bones hidden for longer. Meh. Mm. So, what is Michele and Bembe? Well, let's jump back to the start of all this. Some explorers were talking to some native Congolese people 
and they drew an outline of a sauropod on the ground and the native people said, that is Mokele Mbembe. Dinosaur confirmed. Well, in 2001, the BBC funded a documentary series called Congo, where in one instance, the Congolese people were being shown a wildlife book and they exclaimed, that is Mokele Mbembe, and they pointed to a rhinoceros. This makes a lot of sense, especially considering the horn, but I don't think that necessarily means Mokele Mbembe is a rhinoceros. I think the term spirit actually works pretty well here, and it may have implied a rhinoceros, an elephant, a hippopotamus, any creature that stops the flow of rivers. Maybe it wasn't meant to imply a single creature, but any creature that was the guardian of that waterway. Different Mokele Mbembes from different regions would also explain the inconsistencies in their descriptions. But what if? What if Mokele Mbembe is a dinosaur? 65 million years. That's how long ago non-avian dinosaurs went extinct. We are seeing an extinction of creatures of a similar stature right now, let alone being hidden in the Congo. But it does have some things going for it. It's very secluded, which could lead to less competition. It's also believed sauropods could live for over 200 years. Considering the West only heard of it about 100 years ago, maybe they were just more common before we heard about it. Maybe. I don't usually end my videos on a definite, but I just can't ignore the size of this creature. Every cryptid I've looked at that approaches this size either consists mostly of mythology or lives most of its life completely submerged. Now, Mokele Mbembe is amphibious, true, but with flat feet instead of fins or flippers means it's going to be living on the surface mostly, and with so many expeditions led after it, I think it would have been found by now. Something like Mokele Mbembe may have existed, and we just haven't figured out its identity yet. But we just won't know for certain until we find it alive, dead, or any kind of remains in the area. Luckily, I happen to know a man who doesn't falter at the persuasions of reality. It's everyone's favourite cryptozoologist, Wendell Elmwood. Over to you, Wendell. Thank you, Nurchin, and hail and well met to my fellow crypto enthusiasts. Today we've travelled to the Congo River Basin, and I've been tracking Mokele and Bembe for weeks. And you know what? I think we're getting pretty close. Let's go. The natives keep offering me food and shelter, but you know me, I'm a man of the land. I've been mainly eating uh, this stuff. It tastes terrible. Now, if you're trying to find a Mokele and Bembe of your own, just remember, search the swamps and forests of the Congo River Basin. Look for areas where the tops of the trees have been eaten. Search flooded forests and swamps, and also look for footprints about the size of a frying pan. That's why I never leave home without my trusty measuring tool. Better than metric, I always say. All of the tops of the trees appear to have been eaten, which must mean there it is! By Jove! I almost don't believe it! It was a patasaur this entire time. Amazing! Well, Man Nurchin, yes, you won't believe it, but I just found Mokele and Bembe. Oh, bugger, I just said I didn't think he existed. Ah. Well, that doesn't matter. The real prize was the journey along the way. What? Magnificent. What does that even mean? 